Hello there everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. I uh, just want to start out by apologizing for not being able to actually release these videos once a week like I did in the beginning. Um, I have a lot of new roles and responsibilities here at Toon Boom, um, taking over more uh, in the in the social media marketing side as well. So you can always feel free to reach out to me at um, on Twitter at Lily Toon Boom. Um, and also, you know, I monitor a lot of the channels that are going through the direct Toon Boom, such as Facebook and, and so on. So, you know, if you're reaching out to me and you have questions or suggestions for things that you'd like to see on Tip of the Week, then for sure um, reach out to me and let me know. Uh, and I will do my best to try and release these videos as often as I can. So um, this week I wanted to continue along talking about gaming and um, I want to focus on talking a little bit more about exporting and um, how the export for sprite sheets works so that you can optimize your sprite sheet a little bit. So I'll just do it with the same sheep character that I've been working on for the past few weeks. Um, and I'm not going to change anything as regards the animation. So this is pretty much where we left off. We've got a little bit of an idle animation on this guy. He's just kind of a fun little character. So the first thing that's really important to understand about when you're drawing stuff in Toon Boom is that you want to make sure that the drawings are all relative size the same as they're going to export on your sprite sheet. So let me explain what that means. Um, I've kind of been working mostly here in the camera view, but it's easier to explain and to understand if we look at the drawing view, because when you export for sprite sheets, it's actually going to use the drawing view to export the drawings out. And so when you look at things in the drawing view, if I turn the light table on, so if I just you know click on the light there, then it will show not just the layer that I have selected. So, you know, when I change the layer that I have selected with the transform tool here, it will also select that layer in the drawing view. Um, but when you turn the light table on, then it also shows all of the other layers. So when you think of it, um, Toon Boom will use this drawing grid to figure out what size that drawing should show up on your sprite sheet. And so because the drawings, when I turn the light table on, because the drawings all look the same relative size in the camera view as they do in the drawing view, I know that I'm okay. Um, sometimes what happens is that people will draw things, you know, either in the camera view or in the drawing view. Um, let me just do an example here. You might add a drawing, let's call this, I don't know, wing. <laughs> this is going to be a really weird looking sheet. Uh, I'll put a wing on this sheet. Okay, so let's say that I decide I want to draw this wing and so I draw this crazy looking wing. It's like one of these flying sheep, you know, when you're trying to fall asleep at night and the sheep are like jumping over the fence. I don't know. Okay, so when I am now looking at this, I see what the size is in the camera view and it, it works all right and um, I can just color this in just to make this slightly easier. Let's, you know, throw a gradient on there. Okay, so let's say that this is done, this is exactly how I want it to look. Um, then, at this point, I might make sure that it's in the right place in my hierarchy because I just sort of drew it on top of everything. So maybe I want this wing to be a child of um, the master peg. So I can just sort of drag it down onto the master peg and then I can add a new peg layer there. But sometimes what happens is if I make it a child of something else and that something else has some kind of a transformation on it already, um, let me just undo that a couple of times. So I've got my wing back out here. Let's say that my head already has a transformation on it, like it's it's been scaled up for whatever reason. If I then make this wing a child of that head, you see how the wing gets scaled up too? So what some people do is they use the camera view to really scale things up or down to make it fit with the rest of the rig. But you see that when I scaled it up or down in the camera view, it doesn't also scale it up or down in the drawing view. So to explain a little bit a little bit better the difference between the drawing view and the camera view, I think of it like the drawing view is where you're setting up your drawings. It's like your resting state. This is your neutral position for your character rig. When you look at the camera view, this is where you can actually animate it, right? You're, you're putting keyframes on it and you're seeing how it's moving around. But the drawing view always shows that drawing at its default position. 
And so it shows exactly how large the drawing is when you drew it. So for that reason, this is why we use the drawing view and not the camera view, because the camera view represents the keyframes, right? And the drawing view represents the resting state. And so when we export the drawings out to the sprite sheet, we use the resting state of the drawings to ascertain how large or small that drawing should be. So um, let's get rid of this wing. Uh, let's do another example where I've got this sort of curly piece of hair on the, sh on the sheep's head. Let's say that, for example, when I was drawing it, I accidentally drew this curly piece of hair really large. And then I went back in the camera view and I'm like, oh my gosh, look, that's really large. I gotta scale this thing down. So you scale it down in the drawing view. And then you animate it, looks great, you're good to go. What happens when you export it out? Well, if I were to export this out to the sprite sheet, then this curly hair drawing is going to appear very large in comparison to all of the other drawings because it will use the relative size in the drawing view to export this out to sprite sheet. So I'll do an example like this with the with this file that I've now let's let's call this save this new version I'm going to sh um, let's call this sheet vital 3. So let's let's do an example where I save this one out. So remember to save out your, your character rig, you want to make sure that you have the function showing, the script showing in your scripting toolbar. And so if it's not already in your scripting toolbar, you can always click on Manage Scripts. And um, I'll just remove it from here. It's called TV Export to Spreadsheets, but I'll just remove it just to show you again how to add it. So if you go under Files, you're looking for TV Export to Spreadsheets. And then these are all of the functions that are included inside that um, script. And so you do need to click once more on TV Export to Sprite Sheets to select this function and then just click on the triangle to add it to your toolbar. Um, and at this point, you know, you've got it there. You could customize the icon if you want, but I'm just going to sort of leave that default gear like icon there. So at this point, if I want to export this thing out, I can now click on that icon. I'll just go ahead and put it in a save path where I can find it. So let's put this on the desktop and I'll create a new folder. And let's call this sheep export long curl because there's a long curl on the head. Now here I'll just call this, actually you want this to be the name of your character, right? So this is my sheep. And then it'll use the, the version name to as a clip late as a clip name when it puts it in there so I can hit export and now if I go and open that file I can see what this looks like so look at this sprite sheet now look how large that curl is if you see the curl is about the same size as the body whereas it should be you know, half the size of the head, right? That's how big I actually have it. So if I go back and I look at, let's just minimize this here. If I go back and look at my camera view and I'll just sort of switch this to the frame where I had resized it. And then let's look at this uh, sprite sheet at the same time here. So if you see how big I actually want my curl to be, I want it to be, you know, just maybe slightly larger than the eye. But you see in the sprite sheet it's showing up really large. And so the reason that it's showing up really large is because I used my select tool and made that really large and then I sort of compensated by resizing it with the transform tool. So the best rule of thumb is whenever you're creating drawings to use the drawing view so that you can really make sure that the relative size of the drawings is the right one. So just to finish up on this uh, subject of export, um, I'm going to just show you how to import this file into Unity now. So let's go back. I'm going to undo a bunch of times to get back to where I was before. So now I've got my great little sheep and his curl is the correct size on his head. And by the way, if you ever do, I showed you in an earlier tip how you can clone a drawing, right? So you can actually clone a drawing layer so that it shares the same drawing 
and then when you swap the drawing out, um, they'll swap together as well. So a good example of where you might want to do this is with the eyes. And so you can actually see on my drawing that I have cloned the eyeball because when you look at it in the drawing view, you see only one eye drawing because that eye drawing is being shared both on both the eyes. I did two different pupils just to have an example of having something that wasn't sharing the same drawing, but you could also have the pupils sharing the same drawing as well. Um, and then when we do look at the exported sprite sheet, you see in this case that the eye only exports once onto the sprite sheet. If you have two drawings that are literally exactly the same and they're always going to be the same um, and you always want them to swap together, then you can definitely make use of that cloning to save a little bit of extra texture space as well. Okay, so now that I've done this, let me export this again, um, and I'm going to um, overwrite this file. So when your file name or the clip name in here shows up as red, basically it means, okay, you've just selected to export this out, but there's already a clip name in that folder that has the same name. And so if you choose to export, that it will overwrite. So this is the only reason it's red. It's like you're going to overwrite this file. So it's just kind of warning you about that. And so now I can hit export, it overwrites this file, let's close this again, and um, now I should have the correct information there. So let's go into Unity. Um, so at this point now I've just got a, a blank scene. I created a new scene within the Toon Boom project that we send you guys out. That's pretty much the easiest way to do it because we'll send you, uh, when you ask for us to send you the package, we send you a project that already has um, all the plugin information directly in it. And so you can just create a new scene file or copy and paste the project and then you have all the all the code that you need in the background. So at this point I just create a new scene and then with the new scene I can go to game object, create other, and I'm looking for harmony object. So if you don't see harmony object on here it's probably because you're not using that project file that we send you that already has um, the code in it. So now I can just select Harmony Object. And then what I want to look for is I want to go to that folder that I just exported out. So here's the long curl folder, and then I can click on the sheep, and now I'm good to go. Once you see the XML files and the sprite sheets, then you can just hit Choose. And um, it will also ask you if you want to create a camera. You know, If you've already set up your own camera within your game engine, then you might want to hit do not create but if you do you can hit create so I'll just go ahead and select the camera sometimes what some people will do is they'll create a camera move within Harmony and then and then bring it in here so you know it's it's really up to you what you want to do there so now I've got my sheep and I can uh, you know hit play to preview what this guy looks like so I've got maximize on play on which is why my screen was sort of getting really big and if the camera is still too close to the character you can always select the camera and then drag and drop the frame to sort of move it forward or backward to be able to see your character a little bit better. Now you'll notice that if I do hit play, so far I'm not actually seeing any animation happen. And the reason for that is that um, I don't have, I haven't turned on the looping capability. If I do select my sheep here, um, I do see some information on the right hand side. So there are some scripts that were automatically added in here. You can also manually add these in, and there is some gaming documentation available. Um, if you go on docs.tubeboom.com and select Harmony and the gaming documentation, you can see how to do it step by step. But by doing game object, create other Harmony object, it automatically adds all of the relevant scripts that you need in here um, in order to load your animation in. So there's a Harmony renderer, which actually renders your character. Um, and then you do have the Harmony animation in there. But what we don't have is we don't yet have a loop on this character. And so um, you, there's some audio information down there, but that doesn't include the looping of the character itself. So if we go to Add Component, so just at the bottom there, Add Component, Scripts, and then I can choose to loop all or just loop one. So looping all will loop, loop all of the animations, but loop one will just loop this particular animation. And then I can hit play, and I see the animation happening now. So at this point, it's time for the animator to pass the project on to the programmer, and the programmer can do the programming magic on it. And um, all of you programming geeks out there should know what to do next um, in terms of how to add your interactivity. 
Um, but you may have some more questions on the technical side about how um, to interact with things and how to extract information out or, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of technical questions that can come up from the programming level. Um, and so we're actually building an FAQ here at Toon Boom based on the, the types of questions that we've received from programmers in the past. Um, I will not go through these things on Tip of the Week because it, it's, I don't think it's necessary for, or I don't think it's useful, let's say, for, for the public at, at, at large to, um, to see somebody go through that level of technical detail. But what we will do is we will publish this FAQ online and we'll make it available to everyone so that you can go on and check to see if the questions that you're asking have already you know, been asked by other people and if you can really quickly and easily find the answers to those questions. And naturally, if you don't find the answers to the questions on the FAQ, um, and I will let you guys know where that will be posted um, as soon as I get the A-OK -okay on that one. Uh, but if you don't find the question that you need, just reach out to us. You can always uh, write us questions at support at tombboom.com and um, those guys will help you reach the right people uh, to get your questions answered. We're here to help. Um, we're very excited about all of the game projects that are happening now. Um, there's a lot of people that are either actively working on games using Harmony or testing the platform and so we're, we're really cheering you guys on and we're excited to see some of these projects happen. If you're interested in knowing about some other people who have successfully done some game projects, this is going to be growing a lot over the next you know, few months because um, more and more projects are, are being done as we go. But if you are interested in, in knowing, then go to Community Success Stories, and from here you can select Game and App Developers. And um, then we have some examples here of some of the projects that have used Toon Boom technology or are in the progress of using Toon Boom technology now. Um, so we're really excited about that and um, we look forward to seeing the types of games that you guys are going to make. And after you do make your game or even while you're in progress making your game, please reach out to us and tell us because we'd love to share your story. Uh, we'd love to tweet about it and put it on our Facebook page and um, you know, write success stories for you. And we're also redoing our showcase right now and so we're going to have a new showcase a section on the website where you can upload your own videos, trailers, your pitch videos, things like that um, to share with the community. So we really look forward to seeing what you guys are doing and good luck! See you next time.